أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون ما يأتيهم من ذكر من ربهم محدث إلا استمعوه إلا استمعوه وهم يلعبون لاهية قلوبهم وأسر النجوى الذين ظلموا هل هذا إلا بشر مثلكم؟ أَفَتَأْتُونَ السِّحْرَ وَأَنْتُمْ تُبْصِرُونَ قَالَ رَبِّي يَعْلَمُ الْقَوْلَ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ بَلْ قَالُوا أَضْغَاثُ أَحْلَامٍ بَلْ افْتَرَاهُ بَلْ هُوَ شَاعِرٌ فليأتنا بآية كما أرسل الأولون ما آمنت قبلهم من قرية أهلكناها أفهم يؤمنون وما أرسلنا قبلك إلا رجالا نوحي إليهم فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله How's everyone doing tonight? All right. الحمد لله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونسلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد so first and foremost, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight for our program. Zakla khair for coming. Uh, I guess this is a very interesting topic and some uh, a topic which a, a lot of detail. People have done, uh, you know, seven or ten series of these uh, programs when it comes to the major signs of the Day of Judgment. It all depends on how much detail we get into. So inshallah, you know, I haven't timed this or anything, but whatever we can go over, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa taala allow us to benefit from that, and inshallah, uh, hopefully. We, we can all try to remember what, whatever we can remember. So uh, we began with the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, once he was giving a talk to the Sahaba. Actually, he walked in after the Dhuhr Salah and he seen some of the companions talking to one another. And they were discussing things about the hereafter or the Day of Judgment. And the Prophet ﷺ sat down with them and he started to discuss with them some of the details of the Day of Judgment and the signs leading to that. And they said that he continued to speak and he continued to go into such detail that the time of Asr came and we prayed the Asr Salah. Thereafter, he continued to tell us and he told us in such detail, he says that the narrator says that those of us could remember, we remembered whatever we could remember. And the rest was basically over our heads, many things that we could not recall because of the amount of detail that was given. And subhanAllah, in some of the books of uh, Hadith, uh, you will see such detail that uh, it's very difficult to go over every single thing. But anyways, now why are we talking about the signs, the major signs of the Day of Judgment? What's the purpose of this? Okay, first, first and foremost, for our information, if we didn't know this, and I didn't know this till very recent, that even the earlier messengers of Allah, the prophets of Allah, would discuss the major signs of the Day of Judgment with their nations, with their people. I know that every nation warned their people about the Dajjal, the, the Antichrist, because he, wa he is, or he will be, the greatest of tribulations and tests. But I did not know that the messengers of Allah would tell their people about the other major signs leading to the Day of Judgment. And so I wondered, and one of the reasons we understand, we get, is that, so they may reform themselves, refrain from an immoral living, and take care of the way that they are guarding themselves because uh, every single person, one of the hadith we're going to discuss, it's talking about and yourselves, meaning 
that one of the major signs of the day of judgment is everyone's time of death will be like their day of judgment. Because that will be the time where they'll be able to see that of the unseen. And that will basically be their short term day of judgment until the actual day of judgment comes. So this is one of the reasons that we go over these signs. The ummah has taken great care to preserve all of the hadith and all of the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ when it comes to the Day of Judgment and the signs of the last hour especially. When it comes to the Day of Judgment, the Qur'an is, you know, every verse of the, um, majority of the verses of the Qur'an or one third of the Qur'an is on the hereafter. And the Yom Al-Qiyamah and Jannah and Jahannam. But when we talk about the signs of the Day of Judgment, these are very, very particular for us to remember, for us to go over because they will allow, allow us to act in accordance to that. I'll give you an example. So there's a hadith that we, we mentioned yesterday in the talk. This hadith is in Mishkat in which the Prophet ﷺ says that what the time will come, a, a time will come towards the end of times. Well, the voices will be raised in the masajid. Okay? Voices will be raised means, one of the meanings is that they will be shouting and screaming one of the meanings is that people will be talking so loudly as if there's no regard for those who are worshipping Allah. And we see that all the time. Right before Salah, right after Salah, there's yelling and screaming. Whereas all the talking can happen simply by going outside. And of course, I am at fault as well. I'm not saying, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm guilty of that as well. So one habit that we can make is right after we're done the Salah, we have to speak to someone, let's go outside. MashaAllah, we have a beautiful courtyard. Let's discuss there. Let's have that talk there. Trust me, because the shaitan is there to deceive and to destroy your salah. I always keep this one since I've been here for the last 10 years. I've never led salah, I think I can remember, except that the phone was in my pocket and it's on silent. And the reason is because as soon as I put it down, I've ever put it down, it rang and I couldn't reach it. It's like the shaitan, as soon as you let it go. Right now, first, again, one of the very rare times, I put it in my jacket, I put my jacket ahead. And somebody's calling me over and over and over and I'm trying to pray and I'm saying, SubhanAllah, look at the timing. So we'll always be distracted, but we, we can try to help it with these hadith. Another hadith comes, سَيَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانٌ يَكُونُ حَدِيثُ حَدِيثُهُمْ فِي مَسَاجِدِهِمْ فِي أَمْرِ دُنْيَاهُمْ The Prophet ﷺ said, a time will come when the people, they're coming to the masjid, their discussion, their talk. Okay, hold on one second. I think some of the sisters want to come in from that side. Is that correct? Okay. If, we, if there's some of the brothers can just make some space. No problem. Brothers can make some space, a little bit in that corner for them. Whichever sister wants to come down, they can come down. If they want to stay up, they can stay up. The brothers on my left back, back corner, if you guys can make some space for the sisters. So... There will be a time where people will come to the masjid, to the masajid, and their entire purpose for coming will be about their worldly affairs. I mean, that's something that it's hard to think about. Their hadithuhum fi amri dunyahum, about the affairs of their, okay, how's business, how's this, how's that? And you know what's so sad to see? is sometimes you come to the masjid and you see people right before the salat or jama'ah, there's people leaving. Or there's some kind of function going on and salah is about to start and everybody's going away. And you wonder, wait, what's the point of this masjid if there's people leaving the masjid at the times of salah? Like this is the place to be during the salah and people are leaving. And so this is, this is, uh, this is what you remember. Like did we come for the salah or we came for something else? Did we come for some, anything else? Even if there's a program in the uh, banquet hall. Okay, it's a private program. Okay, whatever the reason is, but the masjid is right here. You can hear the adhan and you can hear the salah. For a Muslim to leave the masjid after they hear the adhan is makru, and some say makru tahrimi close to haram. The mu'adhin is calling you towards the salah and you're leaving. So this hadith reminds us that look, when we come to the masjid, what's the first thing we do? We make intention, we are going there for the ibadah of Allah. We are not going there for anything else. 
And I'm telling you, I went to masajid for other reasons when I was younger. In fact, this Inglewood Masjid that we go to on Fridays, I tell everybody, I said, the only reason I started going because my brother took me, he said, the food's really good, let's go. I'm like, let's go, I don't care. I want to try this food. And that's all we used to go for the first few weeks, that's it. Only for the food. Food had a lot of barakah, it was great. It was outside and the, you know, there was no uh, roof, so it felt really nice eating outside on the ground and eating. But anyways, intentions can change. And that's what we have to look at. Okay, we're coming to the house of Allah. Yeah, our friends might be coming. Yeah, there's some other things going on. That's great. But my first niyyah should be for the ibadah, the worship of Allah. The second niyyah could be, I'm coming to learn about the deen. I'm coming to educate myself about Islam. And then after that, all the other intentions. Okay, so this is, this is why I'm bringing this hadith here. The Prophet ﷺ, once again, he said, a time will come where the people's main reason or their main discussion will be about the affairs of their world. He said, Fala tujali suhum. He said, Don't sit by those people. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of those people. And this is a kinaya, according to the Hashia, of their, 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 uh, uh, their acts of worship not being accepted. Okay, so this is a very uh, kind of a scary reminder for us. Then the next thing is that whoever witnesses any of these signs around them, some of the minor signs we discussed already last time. Today we're going to discuss some of the signs leading up to the major and including the major signs as much as we can. So whoever sees these signs, it's a clear reminder that we are going to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you see something so clearly that somebody mentioned and it happens in front of you, this should fortify our belief in our iman, in our conviction, in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised. And what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, predicted basically 1400 years ago. Okay, it's the truthfulness of the Prophet who spoke about these signs centuries before they could even occur or they could even imagine that this would happen. You're talking about the Sahaba who could not even imagine buildings being as, as high as mountains. They could not imagine this could happen. Um, but yet this is happening. So this should strengthen our Iman and again it should make us aware that a day is coming. Now, let's look at some of the ahadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Badiru bil a'mali sab'an. And another hadith says sitan. He said, hasten to do good deeds before six things happen. The rising of the sun from the west, the smoke, the jaw, the beast, and the death of one of you or the general turmoil. This is where that, you know, when I mentioned the death of one of you is also a sign, meaning hasten to do good deeds before any of these things happen. So how do we divide these signs of the day of judgment? So some of the scholars mentioned that we divide them in two parts. One is from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu demise, which is the first basic sign of the Day of Judgment, all the way until the Mahdi, Mahdi arrives. Imam Mahdi radiallahu an arrives, and this is basically the beginning of the uh, major. Um, and then the second part is from the Mahdi all the way until the fire, the great fire that forces people to go towards the re resurrection, toward the place of mahshar, the place of gathering, uh, until or before the trumpet is blown, okay? Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah has divided the major signs into two as well. He says that those signs that happen on the earth without changing the nature of the earth and no clear distinguishing of a Muslim and a non-Muslim. For example, he says the Mahdi uh, he says the yeah, Juj and Ma actually not yeah, Juj and Majuj. Um, he says other uh, things, uh, being specifically the Mahdi and going on with other things. And then the, that actual and the second part is that which will actually change the earth, the nature of the earth, and that includes yet yeah, Juj and Majuj and the beast and the smoke and the landslides that will happen. And he says that from that point on that tawbah will not be accepted. And some scholars mention that from the time of Imam Mahdi onwards, or once people see Isa alayhi salam, there is difference of opinion about that. But major signs are such that we have to be careful. If someone's alive for the major signs and they see them, then many people say that that's the time that the tawbah or repentance of a person uh, will not be accepted anymore because they can see clearly. All right. Now some of the signs which lead us close to the major signs, okay? Business and trading will reach far and wide. 
business and trading so far and wide that people will boast and basically uh, the effort that they will make uh, and how important the agendas of business will become will outstrip anything else, any moral values, even the sanctity of human lives and we're seeing that in front of us. Yes, everybody is seeing that in front of our eyes with our brothers and sisters in Gaza and around the world. In fact, the last few decades, the wars that we have seen, uh, one of the main purposes is greed and the greed for wealth. It's all business, really. That's what they say, right? Business as usual. This is why there, mashallah, people who are waking up, they're, they're you know, trying to block, you know, whether it's um, certain businesses, whether it's the media, whether it's uh, uh, wherever it is, to try to wake people up, that people are getting killed here, and you guys are continuing on with your usual day. Uh, that's not normal. That should not happen. So this is one of the signs. Okay, and when it's accompanied by ignorance, then it's very dangerous, it's disastrous. And this is what we're seeing, it is disastrous. People are literally, you know, you can wipe out an entire city for the sake of whatever project you want to do. I don't know if anybody heard this, there's a city in Pakistan, very poor village. This is where they dug, they, the, the village, villages did not have clean water. They dug in that area and they did such a you know, project that they were able to extract clean water and basically from there, they're stealing their water, putting them in bottles and shipping them out. And anybody know which uh, brand that is? Anybody can guess? Anybody? Yeah. It's, no, not Kirkland. <laughs> I'm just holding this, no. It's Nestle. Of course, Nestle, Israeli owned. Okay, they're doing that. You can just imagine what else they're going to do with other things. So they're going to these poor countries, they're taking their resources, and instead of helping them, they're stealing from them. And this is all in the name of business and trade, subhanAllah. People will come to the masajid for discussion about worldly affairs. We talked about this. Killing will increase, okay? Killing has increased to such an extent, subhanAllah. One thing, and I'm not trying to, uh, you know, put fear in anybody's heart, but every single Muslim should be at least ready at least prepared to defend themselves, okay? Um, have some kind of, uh, whether you call it martial arts, whether it's whatever it is, but protect yourself because a strong Muslim is better than the weak Muslim, okay? So in some sort of way, we should not be uh, someone who can be, you know, basically overwhelmed or overcome that easily. Each and every one of us should be able to do that and we should try to do that. The Prophet ﷺ said, Arabia, the last day will not come until Arabia will return to greenery and rivers. Okay, now this makes you think that, okay, when was Arabia green and when did it have rivers? One of the shuyukh said, mentioned this could have been thousands of years back, um, hence the discovering of oil, meaning oil is one of the signs that there was something before. Wallahu alam, I don't want to get into the detail, I wouldn't even know about this. But this is one of the signs. Ha is it happening now? Slowly but surely, we're seeing this. I'm sure you've seen pictures and images, and this is not something that's AI, but actually real. People will ask one another, did the Prophet ﷺ mention this will happen at this time? This is a sign in itself. That people will ask, is this a sign of the Day of Judgment? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm trying to mention the things that you don't usually hear. Some of the other things are repetitive, so I'm trying to just list down the things that I think would be a little bit uh, of a new thing to many people. A man who remains, remains, this is of course, a man who remains steadfast on his deen would be like holding live coal. There will be many police, okay? Police will increase who will back tyrants, who will back, back up the oppressors. Much police around the world, okay? These are some things that I'm sure if you're if you're not living in a cave, then I'm sure you're seeing this, you know, throughout the world. Many of these things have happened, many to still to occur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. High offices will go to the undeserving and young boys will rule. The Quran will be turned into a tool for songs and music. Now, if you want some of these references, I'm getting them from at least three or four different books and some tafasir. We can give you the references later, inshallah. But I'm trying to read them out. Uh, if we do the Arabic part as well, it's going to take a little bit more time. So this is also going to happen. Okay, the Quran will be used 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, and to a tool for songs and music. And there will be an abundance of reciters who will recite in a singing way to show off of how they're reciting for fame and for the, for the sake of wealth, for the sake of earning. And there's a stern warning in the hadith for anybody who recites the Quran for the sake of earning a worldly uh, gain, for the sake of worldly gain. So a person goes around, recites Quran and asks for money in return. This is a stern warning given in hadith. For reciting the Quran, if a person is becoming a hafiz, if they're memorizing any portion of the Quran, it should be alone for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never ever to actually charge and get some wealth out of that, okay? But when people are reciting the Quran, the intention should be to beautify their voice because Allah is listening to me. And of course, when it comes to a lot of these maqamat, okay, when we were learning in Canada, we were memorizing the Quran, we didn't even hear about some of this stuff. We never heard about this. As later on we went on, there's all of these different maqam and some of them go past that basically um, threshold where now it becomes into more of a tune, more of a melody type of thing, okay? And on top of that, if a person doesn't have tajweed and the proper rules of recitation, their Quran sounds more like a, me uh, a melody, more like a song than it does the Quran. Whereas if you have good tajweed and if you don't have a, the best voice, you're still gonna have a beautiful recitation because that's the nature of the Quran. By the way, if anybody has any comments or questions or anything in between, if it's related, please do. Okay, this is not a khutbah. Um, next thing. People, Muhammad, let's see here. There will be scarcity or scarcity of jurists and scholars will be killed. Okay. Divorce will become very common. Wine will be named, this is a very interesting, wine will be named Nabith. Anybody know what Nabith is here? Nabith? Okay, this is like a drink that's made from dates. It's actually a healthy drink. It's actually a non-alcoholic drink. Uh, you put dates into water. Uh, you take out the pits. You put them in the next, uh, basically overnight in the morning. You have them. It's a very nutritious, very, very healthy drink which shouldn't be drank every single day, of course, because of its uh, heat, but it's a very uh, beautiful, I mean, it's, it's a very healthy drink. Now, they're saying that wine will be called that, meaning it will be named other than its name. Interest will be called trade, and bribery will be, tra will be termed gifts. And these things will be regarded lawful because of their new terminology. Now, however much you wanna understand that, you can understand that. Because there are terms today that many people are confused of, that they don't understand, which are clear cut, maybe unlawful, clear cut they're unlawful, but because of these new terms, it becomes very confusing. Uh, women's heads will be arranged like the humps of lean camels. In another, uh, I believe in another narration, it says like bacterian camels. Okay, so a certain type of hair cut or a cert even a serpent, cer cer uh, specific type of hijab that's worn that can uh, resemble these, okay? So this is something to be aware of. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى تروا عشر آيات the, the last day will not come, the last hour will not come until you see the sun rising from طلوع الشمس من مغربها والدخان and the smoke والدابة الأرض and the beast that will come on the earth. وَيَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ and يَأْجُوجَ الْمَأْجُوجَ and the descending of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam and the Jal and three landslides a landslide in the east, a landslide in the west and one in the Arabian Peninsula and uh, then there will be a fire that will come that will drive the people towards the mahshara okay now um, so what we'll do here is first there is an order, uh, the chronological order according to some. There's two different, there's a few opinions. I'll go to the two famous ones. The first order of the major signs to come according to some will be that first the smoke will appear. This is the less uh, popular opinion, that the smoke will appear, then the jaw will come, then the arrival of the Mahdi, then the des descending of Isa ibn Maryam, then the emergence of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, then uh, the emergence of the beast of Dabatul Ard, then the sun will rise from the west and then the fire will begin. 
according to some people, they say that once the first major sign comes, the other ones will follow like beads falling. And one of my teachers in Egypt said that the signs, the major signs, the first one comes after that till the last day will be approximately only 200 years. 200 years, all of these major signs would occur. And even some, like Mawlana Shafali Tanwi Sahib, Rahimahullah mentions, it's 150. So it's a very short span. It's a very short amount of time. Um, so the ones who say this, they say that the smoke will appear and it will be visible. Some say that it could be type of pollution, maybe due to war or maybe due to conflicts. That so much war and conflicts and bombing and this and that will happen that there will be actual smoke around. That's one opinion. But there is other opinions which are stronger which mention that the smoke that will come will be a different type of smoke. Of course, we're seeing this all, all over. But this smoke will be actually, you know, the major smoke that will be so different from everything else that the whole world will be able to tell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this. Then wait you for the day when the sky will bring forth a visible smoke. Okay, so this will be very visible. This will be very different. This is one of the major signs of the day of judgment. Then they say that the jaw, the jaw will come. Now, so what I'm going to do here is I'll go over some of these major signs and then we'll go over in detail. If we have time, we'll try to go over a few more things. And then when the time, when I see that most of you are not listening anymore, then we'll just stop. Most of you are starting to yawn. Then we'll, we'll, we'll see. So, the Jal will come. Who is the Jal? Some people say it's a type of ideology. Some people say it's a type of system. Some people say it's the TV. <laughs> Anybody hear this? There's some crazy opinions about this. The Jal is going to be a person. It's going to be a human being. He's going to be a short man. He'll come as a young man. Head like a snake. Curly haired. Ugly, scary man. He's not going to be any good looking guy. Sterile, no kids, no system, no force. At a time when the religion will be taken lightly, he will be there. He is an one-eyed, and your Lord is not one-eyed. This is the hadith. It means he can only see with one eye. It doesn't mean he only has one eye. You know all these pictures that are coming out? That's not true. That's some other thing. They're just trying to get you, you to click on the videos. So don't watch that. Okay, he's not one-eyed. One-eyed means he can see with one eye, and the other eye he's blind. The right eye is like a floating, gr like a grape, okay? And we'll go in more detail after. Then the arrival of the Mahdi. He will be the Amir of the Muslims, and he will be from the last group of Muslims who will continue to fight for the Haq, and this will be their leader. He will be the Imam, he will be the Imam of this, of this uh, Ummah. Um, I will go in detail about their descriptions as well. Descend descending of Imam Isa ibn Maryam, all of the religions will end when he comes, except Islam. Tawheed will be the religion of the world, and he will die after Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and Muslims will pray for him. Um, the uh, Hajj and Umrah will continue after them, then there will be a decline. The emergence of Ya'juj, Ma'juj. Um, okay, let's go back into the detail here. The Quran will be lifted from the hearts and removed totally. Then the emergence of the beast of the earth. He will speak to the people. He will invite them. He will establish argument with them and against the people. After that will occur, the sun will rise from the west. Then this fire will begin from the portion, the part where, which is known as Yemen today. And it will be a large fire such that the whole world will feel the effects of it. And it will lead the people towards the Sham that area which is going to be the area where the Day of Judgment takes place, the area where everybody, the Mahshar basically will start. Now, now we'll continue with some details, okay? Now, uh, we'll start with the stronger opinion, which is the first of the major signs, as was mentioned before, is going to be actually the coming of the Mahdi. What does Mahdi mean? Mahdi means a pious person. Mahdi means the guided person, the rightly guided person. Um, some people actually thought in the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, that he was the Mahdi. Okay? Can anybody tell me why they thought that about him? Anybody have a guess? Let's take a guess. All right, no guess, that's fine. Um, so the reason is because when he was ruling there was complete justice 
there was justice on the earth that there was not before him, obviously after the Khulafa al-Rashidin's time and later on as time went. But when he ruled, subhanAllah, there was justice. He was, he, he was surrounded by royalty. His family was royalty. His brothers were all kings. He had the life of a king and luxury, yet because of the concern of being just to his people, he lived and he uh, voluntarily lived a life of difficulty and sacrifice. He gave up the things to the extent that his brothers and his, the uncles of his kids would make fun of them, that they were poor, you know, they're very, very uh, shabby clothes. But he did all of this to show justice. So the reason I'm bringing him up is because this is what will happen when Imam Mahdi radiallahu anhu will come. There will be justice on the earth as there was injustice, okay? So who will he be? First of all, he will have exemplary personality. Now, look at the resemblance between him and another person here. He will have exemplary personality. He will be a descendant from the Ahli Bayt of Rasulullah from the family of the Messenger of Allah, specifically from the family of Fatima radiallahu anha. His character will resemble that of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He will be tall in stature. His body will be agile. His face will actually resemble the face of the Prophet sallallahu Okay. Uh, his name will be Muhammad, his father's name will be Abdullah, and his mother's name will be Amina. He will stammer slightly in his speech, and due to that, he'll strike his hand on his thigh. I believe that's just to basically get maybe an attention or try to make a point. He will arrive in Medina and proceed to Makkah al Mukarramah. And the pious awliya and the pious uh, people of that age, of that time, the abdals and the awdiya, they will all try to look for him and try to find him. Imam Mahdi will be making tawaf. So now he's, in, he's, he's at the Kaaba. He's in Mecca. He will be making tawaf of the Kaaba. And then he will reach the rukun and he will reach the maqam Ibrahim. At that time, the people will continue to look for him and a group of Muslims or the righteous Muslims will recognize him. How will they recognize him? They will recognize him. There's a difference. In some narrations, they say that there will be a type of uh, voice that could come that will tell the people, Wallahu alam, but the Muslims of the time will, will know. There will be imposters before him. There will be people who try to be like the Mahdi, like the one that will happen in 1970. Anybody hear this? You guys can watch the video. The person who tried to imitate the Mahdi in 1970 killed so many people first time in like the, uh, how many centuries that the, the Umrah or the Hajj was stopped because of him. So that won't happen. He will not make an announcement. Neither will somebody come and go on the mic and say, this is the Mahdi. No. He, when he comes, he will come and the people will know. So he will be the one who, when they, uh, when they uh, recognize him, the people will come to him and they will take bait. Basically, they will pledge allegiance to him and they will follow him, okay? They say that one of the signs of this is the year preceding, the Ramadan preceding, there will be a solar and a lunar eclipse. So if there's ever a solar or lunar eclipse here in Ramadan, just be aware. We'll probably go for Umrah the holiday after that <laughs> to try to find him. I'm just kidding, okay. But it, it's important that we try to recognize that. At that time, he will be discovered. He will be... 40 years old. So that means we will find out about him when he's 40 years. Um, and this is one, one strange thing that we were talking about yesterday that people are talking about the Mahdi and they might be like frightened and you know, we don't know what's happening. But as far as the Jal is concerned, the Jal is alive at this moment. He's here, he's alive, he's on an island. And he is held back until a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits him to go. He was discovered. Uh, some scholars, the weak opinion is that we don't know if it's for, for sure. But Tamim al-Dari radiallahu anhu, one of the sahaba, met him. There's a whole story about how they got, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, deserted on this island. You know, they, their ship got wrecked and they, they found this person and he asked these questions. And they answered him, and only he could have you know, asked such a question. So basically, the Jal is already there. It's just that he's being held back. Just like Ya'juj and Ma'juj. They are already 
alive on earth, which makes it seem like, man, the earth is a scary place to be. If you want to go and explore, don't go too many places. Be careful where you're going. Yeah, Jews and Ma'juj are alive, but they're being held back until a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them. So it's like every day they're digging and they're digging and they come up to this place, the wall that, oh, this is getting a little, you know, it's going to go a little all over the place, so don't mind. The Dhul Qarnayn. Um, so he built this wall and basically they're, they're trying to come out and every time they dig and they dig and they come close and the sunlight comes to them, their leader says, tomorrow we will continue and we'll come out of this. And this continues happening every day and all the time until the majors, you know, until that time right before Yom Al-Qiyamah where that leader of theirs will say that tomorrow, inshallah, we will come out. He'll say inshallah and the next day, lo and behold, they will come out and they will cause a destruction and such chaos that no one has ever seen. And for that fact, the Muslims will be hidden in a certain, not hidden, but they'll take refuge in a certain place. Uh, I believe the place is called Tur. So coming back to this now, where were we here? We're talking about the Mahdi. Yes, so the people will give bait to him. They will basically pledge allegiance to him. Now there's people with the Mahdi. Who else will join the Mahdi? The pious Muslims, the awliya of the places of Iraq and the places of Syria and the places of Yemen. And they will all join the Mahdi and many people from Arabia will come and they will join the Mahdi. So now he has a large army of people. Then what will happen, very interesting, the treasure which is buried under the Kaaba will be taken out and distributed amongst the Muslims. Who has heard this before? Anyone heard this before? Okay, that's a sign of the Day of Judgment too, that people will come and tell you things you've never heard before. But I'm not making this up, this is in the hadith, okay? This is why we have this program, mashallah. So this is mentioned that there will be a treasure, that there is a treasure. Allah knows about the, the, the exact details of this treasure. That where it came from, when did it come, and what is in it particularly. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith of the Prophet mentions that this buried treasure will be taken and it will be distributed to those Muslims specifically. Okay? Then we continue. Then what will happen? Imam Mahdi will fight an army. Of who? There will be approximately 840,000 Christians. And they will, uh, Allah Ta'ala Alam, there is a lot more detail on how this comes about. I cannot go to all of the specifics. There will be, I guess they were, they're called the Romans at that time, but they will be Christians. This huge war will begin. It will continue for days. They said the first day, this many people, the second day, basically after four days, they will be victorious. They will conquer Constantinople. Okay, they will continue uh, conquering other places. This is at a time when there will be a lot of facade and fitna, of course. When Imam Mahdi comes, he is trying to bring back peace. And this is exactly what will happen. That when there will be so much corruption on land and in, in the world, he will come and basically re-establish peace. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, the last hour will not come until a person from my family will come. And he will re restore peace as there was corruption. So this is what's happening in this whole time now. And as this goes on, this will continue to go on for six to seven years. Then the entire world will be illuminated with justice, with equity, with equality, with, with all of the beautiful things that we want in the world. And the inhabitants on the earth will be engaged, all of them, or the majority of them, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And ibadah will be continuing, and this will last these few years. So what we're gonna see in these major signs is a period of lows and highs. And the reason this is, is because when we have the noble leaders, okay? When we have just leaders, you have great times. You have times where the Muslims are on the, on the high. Then when they leave, when their company is gone, when the shaitan works on the people again, when the people start doing major sins again, again, the decline happens. And then again, Isa alayhi So it's like there's going to be up and downs here. And this is what we're going through here, just so you're not confused. So then what will happen? The, once the world is illuminated, mashallah, there's justice. This will continue to last. 
Now, Imam Mahdi will continue to be around or his Khilafah from the time he's 40 and we basically discover him for seven or eight or nine years. Nine years being the most um, authentic. Seven years will be in controlling the mischief of the people and those of the Christians and others and in preparing the Muslim armies. The eighth year will be opposing the Jal. And in the ninth year will be in the company of Isa alayhi salatu was salam. And after that, by the time he's 49 years old, Imam Mahdi will, have, will, will pass away. Okay? So, now we go to the incident here where the Mu'addin will give the Adhan. Now, there's a difference of opinion where Isa alayhi salam comes down, will it be Fajr Salah or will it be Asr Salah? Okay, there's these two differences. The majority is, I believe, the Fajr Salah. Um, let's actually we'll get to Isa alayhi salam separately here I don't want to confuse you Imam Mahdi will ask he will basically ask Isa alayhi salam to lead and Isa alayhi salam will tell him to lead um, oh yes Ibn Abbas radiallahu said that Imam Mahdi will come at a time when people will be despondent and they will say that there is no Mahdi coming okay they will basically deny the coming of the Mahdi by the way, there are a group of Muslims or a group of people that are already saying that. There are people that actually say that there isn't an imam. Whereas there are mutawatir ahadith. There are so many numerous ahadith about him that it's hard to deny that. And so people are already, some people, unfortunately, are saying things like this. Um, yes, so at the time of his demise, when he's 49, Isa alayhi salam will perform his janazah and bury him and thereafter take all of the responsibilities uh, as a ummati, as a follower of the Prophet ﷺ, and not a prophet of Allah. So Isa salam, when he will come and he will meet Mahdi, he will not come as a prophet, but he will come as a follower of the Prophet ﷺ. He will follow the Quran and the Sunnah. He will be taught the Sharia. Some say that he will be taught as from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will come and he will follow the Sharia of Islam. Okay. Subhanallah. Then there's some miscellaneous ahadith that are also from the major here. A group of Muslims whom Allah will love will wage jihad on India and be successful in it. They will bring forth the defeated kings in locks and chains. Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam exactly how this will happen. At that time when this army will return, they will find Isa alayhi salam in Syria on reaching Dabiq or a certain place. The Muslim army will face the Romans and three groups will fight and a group amongst them will be successful, one will, one will run back and one will be defeated. Uh, these people will conquer Palestine. So basically the Muslims of the time later on will conquer Palestine as it's a place that's been conquered so many times. And this whole talk about the temple and this and all of that, there's nothing to worry about. Even if something like that happens, it is only for a short time period, okay? Which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best as what will happen. Um, the Muslims at that time where the Jal will come will be very few upright, pious Muslims around. So first we had the incline of the Muslims, then as Imam Mahdi has gone, um, and as the Jal comes around, because of his fitna and his facade, there will be a lot of incline. Of course, a third of Muslims will be killed by the Jal, a third. A third will be defeated and a third will be victorious. Um, there will be Muslims and Muslims will be very weak. Knowledge will be on the decline. There will be few Arabs at that time. Most of the followers of Dajjal will be women and Jews. Jews from Isfahan. It's even mentioned that Isfahan, the place in Iran, basically this will be the place where he will be cited and these will be the followers Approximately 70,000 plus Jews will be in his army and there will be many of the hypocrites with him. They will be armed with double-edged swords wearing highly expensive silk attire. The Dajjal will appear between Syria and Iraq. He will make himself known at a place called Yehudiya in Isfahan in Iran. Now more a little bit about the Dajjal. Now we go a little bit about him. Okay, everybody's good? We good here? A few more minutes? Okay, this is going to be very interesting. I'm not sure how many of you know this. The Jal will be a youth resembling a person who was named Abdul Uzza bin Qutb. He will be wheat colored and curly hair. Okay? 
both of his eyes will be defective. His eye, right eye will be squint, while the left eye will have a swelling pupil. So again, uh, one eye he could see, and the other one, both not good, you know, nothing nice to look at, basically. The word kafir will be written on his head. Kaf, fa, ra, every believer, every believing man and woman will be able to read it, regardless if they can read or not. He will ride a donkey whose two ears will be a distance of 40 hands apart. How that will look and exactly which way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He will be swift like the clouds and the wind. With his speed, he'll be able to roam around the world like as if the world was folded up for him. So he'll be moving around the world very fast. Is it a private jet? Wallahu alam. What can we say? We don't know. But uh, this is the description that has been given. He will not be able to enter Mecca and Medina as there will be angels on the gates of those cities. Ne neither will he be able to enter Baytul Muqaddas. Okay? He will not be able to enter these places. But those places will become overwhelmed, or the places outside, excuse me. The places outside of Medina will become overwhelmed during that time. Medina will have three earthquakes that will destroy all of the hypocrites that are there. They will be destroyed, and some of them will be able to join the army of the Jal. He will have, now amongst his mischiefs, I, I didn't want to speak too much about the Jal because I was hoping there is a guest speaker coming in about two weeks. Ustad Ammar Ahmed from Chicago, from Darus Salam. He's an amazing speaker. I think he was going to give a talk on how to be saved from the Jal and more about him, like a one and a half hour talk. So I was thinking maybe we shouldn't give, there is a lot of detail about the Jal and I was thinking we can give it to him to, to talk about. So I'm just going to go over a few things and then we can, all right, not to get away from it, but since he's already coming, it will be nice to see you guys there. Two weeks from now, January, I'll, I'll let you know, probably 8th or one of those, yeah. So he will have great treasure of food. One of his great mischiefs or the fitnas are that he will have food, okay? Hidden treasures of earth will come out for him. Uh, for those people that will agree with what he has to say, Allah Ta'ala, obviously through the, the power of Allah that he will allow this Dajjal to, to utilize once, will be that he will be able to, the clouds will be able to give rain to the people who follow him and hold the reins from those that did not listen to him. That is a huge test for somebody that's struggling, for someone that's going through famine or difficulty or hunger, this is, this is dangerous. And this is why one hadith says that kadal kufru, kadal faqru kufran. That is as if poverty, when it comes to such an extent, when you become so poor and you're at such lack of material, it could lead towards kufr and it could lead to disbelief. Because at that point you're so desperate. So these are some of the the, the his, hidden treasures of the earth will come out for him. He will heal and cure the born blind. He will be given satans. He will send out that will talk to the people. Shayateen. One major fitna that, okay, we talked about the clouds. Now, whoever recites the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, whoever is regular on reciting Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Friday, brothers and sisters, let's make a habit of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save that person from his trials to such an extent that if he puts him in a fire, we know he will come with the fire, he will come with the river, you know, his fire will be basically paradise, his, 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 that thing which he's showing as paradise will be as hellfire, um, and there's much explanation to that. But the point here is that even if he does put him to a fire, because of the barakah of the Qur'an that he will recite, that fire will, it will not burn him, he will be cool in that fire, subhanAllah. It's like as if this ummah would be able to experience that what happened to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Meaning, he will not be able to harm that person who is regular in reciting these verses. Okay? Um, what's next here? Now, his fitna and his corruption will last 40 days. But the first, first day out of these 40 days will last a year. So that time will be like a year. And then the next day will be like a month, and then like a week, and then the rest of the 36, 37 days will be as usual. So basically you're looking at a year and some time and a few months, wallahu alam, that's a long time for someone who's causing such uh, corruption. Then the Muslims will all gather 
or they'll be gathered at a place called Urdun, a place in Syria. And then Baytul Maqdis. And eventually all the Muslims will enclose themselves in one of the mountains of Baytul Maqdis. Some call it the Jabal al dukhan or the smoke mountain. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The Jaw will kill a third of the Muslims, defeat a third, and will remain a third. Imam Mahdi will say, now what are we waiting for that we are in this position that we have been you know, sieged and been put in such difficulty for Allah knows how long. He will say, go and fight this arrogant Dajjal. Go and fight him. So thus all the Muslims will make a firm pledge on that night that they will in the next morning go and try to defeat and will fight with this Dajjal. And that is the night which will be an extremely dark night. In that same night, as the dawn appears, the Fajr Salah comes in, what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send one of his prophets, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, will come down and he will be the one who will be the one fighting and killing the jaw. Only Isa alayhi salam will be able to kill the jaw and no one else. Okay? So what will happen? The, the story of the leading of the prayer. After the prayer and the Fajr is done, the door will open which behind, behind which will be the Jal again with thousands of his army of these people that we mentioned and Isa alayhi salam will indicate with his hand to make way and to make the room then he will go and when he sees the Jal he will melt like salt or he will dissolve what exactly that means Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala alam but there will be a type of defeat there there will be a type of um, what is it called you're basically frozen what is this word when you're like you can't do much like a paralyzing it will be like a paralyzing so because he will not be killed at that point it will be a type of paralyzing but what will happen is Isa alayhi salam will then see and his breath will go on or wherever he would as, as far as his breath can go which is as far as I can see those non-Muslims that would be there would be killed instantly at that point Thereafter, the Jal will only be killed at a place called Lud, which is basically uh, in Palestine. Uh, they say that present time it's near an Israeli airport. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best exactly which place, but there's a place called Lud, and this is the place where Isa alayhi salam will fight the Jal. <coughs> he will actually have weapon, and he will actually have a shield, and his shield will hit him, and his shield will have blood on it, and he will be able to tell the Muslims that look, this is blood, meaning this person was a human, he died, and he has, no, he has nothing to do with being divine or godly or anything that he claimed. Because that's what he will claim, obviously. He'll claim that he's God, and people will start to believe in him. Alright, then later on, uh, the remaining of those who are the Ahli Kitab, those of the Christian and Jews that are left, will see Isa alayhi salam, and they will bring faith onto him. They will bring Iman on him. Now a little bit about Isa alayhi salam and we continue and we'll try to finish soon. The dissension of Al-Masih Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he will come, he will come on earth and he, where, where exactly will it come? The hadith of Sahih Muslim mentions that Allah will send Masih ibn Maryam Isa alayhi salam and thus he will descend near the white eastern minaret of Damascus and clad in two yellow sheets leaning on the shoulders of two angels. The Jami' Masjid of Damascus. Anybody ever been there? The Jami Masjid of Damascus in Syria. You've been there? SubhanAllah. Is it a huge masjid? MashaAllah. I wish that one day we, we can go. Uh, that things are easier there. So if you go, you've been there. They, they have the white minaret. They actually call it the minaret of Isa alayhi salam, right? So this is exactly where it's thought that, or where we believe that uh, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will come down and he will, he will come down from that minaret on the shoulders of these angels. His... his Appearance is such that, um, let's see here, basically of a reddish, whitish color. Um, he will be average build. He will come on the, and when he comes down, basically it seems like as if he has taken a ghusl, as if he's taken a shower, hair looking wet, and um, you know, this is a little bit about his description. Isa alayhi salam, when he does come, once he comes down to the earth, he will stay for about 40 years. He will get married later. Isa alayhi salam will get married. And the person he marries will be from the tribe of Shu'aib alayhi salam. He will have children 
after his dissension. Okay? So all of this will happen. So then he'll come down. They say that he will be coming down and also most likely he'll be wearing armor or that he will have a long cap on his head as well. He will have a weapon in his hand, the same weapon which he will kill the Jal with. He will come around Fajr time and together with the Muslims and Imam Mahdi, he will meet all of them and he will be there with them. Okay. What is he going to do when he comes? He will break the cross. And one of the meanings of this is that the all of the different Christian denominations and all of this will be basically, uh, you know, I guess disproven, disqualified. And so all of the worship of any other religions will basically be abolished. He will c kill the swine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. One of the meanings, some people say that filth will be removed, okay, uh, on earth. We're almost done here. Okay, now we're crunching a time here. He will wage jihad against the John and his friends. Uh, after this whole world, okay, after the killing of the Dajjal, the entire world will become Muslim, according to some of the books. The remaining people will be killed, okay. Besides Islam, there will be no other religion. All other things will be abolished, uh, no jizya. The wealth and jewels will be in such abundance at that time that no one will be there to accept it. Isa a.s. will lead the people. He will go for Hajj and he will go for Umrah. And there's a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that continue to go to this house until the time will come. Well, that will no longer be the case. In other words, after Isa a.s. and after this Umrah and this Hajj, and after the time of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, when the worst of people will be there, they, the, the, one of the prophecies that the, a man from Abyssinia will come with thin shins, and he will actually come and he will destroy the Kaaba. And so the Kaaba will be destroyed, the Quran will be taken, and a time will come when we will not be able to benefit from any of this. So the people, while they can take advantage, go for Hajj and go for Umrah and make intention before the time is too late. So, next thing here is that, um, so now you, what do you have? The Jal has been killed, Isa alayhi salam is there, the Mahdi has passed, Isa alayhi salam is married, he has children, he's leading the Muslims, and now for this few years, there will be such peace and abundance that the entire, every type of blessing will be, will come down. There will be no jealousy and hatred will be even removed from the hearts. One, they say the fruits will be so blessed that one pomegranate, pomegranate will have enough to feed a congregation. Milk from one goat will suffice an entire tribe, okay? The poisonous effects of animals will not even be effective. They say even one, in one of the books it says that girl will chase a lion without being harmed. So basically the time will come where there's, you've never seen such a time before for those few years. How long will this last? These blessings will last for seven years. Seven years. I always thought that if we were ever alive in a time after the Jal, then what an amazing time to be alive in, in that time. But that's short-lived as well. Seven years. Then what happens? Of course, we know again, up and down. Then the Ya'juj and Ma'juj, the wall will break. Okay? These are human beings. There is more description about them. Um, exactly who they are but basically we'll go quickly and say that look they'll come out they're going to gather around and they will spread destruction they will be in large quantities as if coming down from like walls and stuff i, I picture actually i'm not going to say but basically a lot of people here running around and causing you know destruction everywhere they go whether it's on land they they'll drink a lot of the water of the lakes and rivers to the point where they'll drink all of the water of the tri tiberius tri tiberius river um, and then some of them will come and say, oh, there used to be water here, basically um, causing, you know, uh, just havoc. Eventually, they will look around and try to, you know, destroy or kill anyone they can see and anyone in their sight. The Muslims will be at a different place. Uh, they will be protected from them eventually. And then, yet yeah, Jujimah Jews will say that we have conquered the people of the earth and should we wage war on the people of the sky, they'll be able to shoot their arrows up into the sky and subhanAllah, lo and behold, their arrows will come back with blood. Meaning they will think, they will assume that we have done all of this, yet, you know, they'll be in a little bit of uh, a deception here. Um, at that time, Isa and his companions will be enclosed at a place where due to the shortage of food, people will value a single cattle to more than a hundred dinars. So wait, we went from all of this blessing and all of a sudden now the decline comes 
and these Ya'juj and Ma'juj come and now the major signs from that point will start coming and um, and then what, what, what will happen? The people will, you know, because of the difficulty they will be in, they'll pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and Isa alayhi salam will make dua and due to his dua, what will happen? Allah will cause an insect to come out from their necks and ears and an infection will appear Due to the infections, their bodies will burst. Okay, all of them will dis be destroyed simultaneously. Isa Ali and his companions will descend to the land. The whole earth will be sticky and filled with the stench of the corpses of these people. Then again, Isa Ali and his companions will make dua. Then Allah will send a strong wind and a huge long neck birds that will pick them up, their corpses, and throw them into an area that Allah knows best. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a storm, a flood that will wash the earth and make it like a mirror again. And the earth again will be, uh, uh, you know, to its original state. And again, fruits and, 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 and uh, again, the time will come back to that. Then the sun will rise from the west. They say that from this point on, there's very little time after that. And once this sign comes, now majority of the scholars say that once they see the sun from that side come out, that will be basically the last time that anybody's iman can be accepted. Because this is such a major sign that basically you're seeing the day of judgment basically almost take place. Not yet. The actual day of judgment is what? After the, the trumpet is blown. There will be two blowings of the trumpet, right? Um, so now what's happening is that the people will be left that, you know, the worst of people will be left. After uh, Ya'juj and Ma'juj die, Isa alayhi salam will also pass away. He will have a normal death and the people will pray his janazah and he will be buried. Where will he be buried? Anybody knows? in the rawdah of the Prophet ﷺ, next to the Prophet ﷺ. There is actually a spot that is there today. If you go for Umrah and Hajj, you say salam to the Prophet. You say salam to Abu Bakr and Umar. And then there's a spot there. That spot is reserved for Isa ﷺ. So that is pretty much there. And then after that, there will be much corruption on earth. And there will be the worst of people. People with no values. The most vile people. Again, uh, scholars will be killed. The Quran will be taken, the Kaaba will be destroyed, the earth basically will not have a single person saying La ilaha illallah. By the way, I skipped through a lot of this, okay? Obviously we know, but because time is done, they're telling me to cut. There will not be a person, La taqoomu sa'a, the hour will not come, hatta, until La yuqala fil ard, there will be nobody left that will say on the earth, Allah, Allah. Not a person that will know Allah's name. Somebody will say, oh, my, grand, my grandfather, grandmother used to say this name before we heard of it. But nobody will be left to say Allah's name or believe. And when that happens, when there's no one to recognize Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy this earth. And this is where the smoke uh, will then come. The smoke will come. Uh, and then after that, the sinking, the landslides, these are huge occurrences that are happening, landslides in the east and the west, in Arabia, basically the whole world will be going through this and then finally a fire will appear. Again, that fire will be such and as such a fire that no one has ever seen and this will lead the people towards the Mahshar, which is around Syria. And some people had a difference of opinion on Arafat, but the majority say that it is Syria or the Sham area. Sham includes Syria, Palestine and that whole land that will be the area and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand what has been said. Allow us to benefit from these signs. Make us aware that we have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make us the great, uh, greatest of Muslims. Last thing I will say, one of my teachers when he was teaching us and talking about the Jal, he said, if I would be around the Jal, I would love to be that one youth. That one young man who will be able to say to the Jal in his face that I know now better than ever before that you are a liar and that the truth is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That youth will be cut in half. That youth will be cut in half for the people to see and then he will be brought back and he will be able to speak. The Jal will say, do you believe in me now as your Lord? He will say, now I believe even more that you are the biggest liar. This man, this young man will not be harmed by the Jal. He will be protected 
but his iman will be so strong because of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him. So one of our teachers would say that if we were ever around, we would want to be like that one youth. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our youth and all of us, uh, the young brothers and sisters, may Allah make our iman strong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to practice the deen as best as possible, inshallah. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Anybody have any questions? We're going out for the food, inshallah. Anybody have any questions, any comments, anything you want to say? Yes, brother. Yeah. This is old news, by the way, they just started to show this now, that you know the oil refinery they found in Gaza worth trillions of dollars, and the reason they're trying to do all of this. Wallahu ta'ala alam that, I mean, of course they're after it, you know, this is their business. If you stop their business, you can stop them from all of the evil that they're doing, and that's, that's the main focus of the BDS. For those of you that don't know BDS, boycott, sanctions, divestment, learn about it, boycott as much as you can. Some Muslims are saying, oh, what is it going to happen if I stop drinking Coke or stop going to Starbucks? No, there's a big deal. There's two billion of us. If we all act, there's going to be a huge difference. You don't think that there are already so many close, stores have closed down. There's already so much harm that's done, but we have to do it on a very large scale. So we all have to make intention that we're not going to support anything that supports, you know, this genocide and that, that, that's going on. So... Yes, your question is right. Business is going to be preferred over humanity. This is happening in front of our faces. Millions of people have died because of oil and because of all these resources. There are links, yes. You can look up to I have a video actually. I can show you. There's many companies that share that. If anybody wants to link here, I can show you a video. They talk about every single company that's linked to them whether it's uh, traveling, whether it's food, whether it's all of them, pretty much it talks about most of them. And they're owned by like the two, like five ma major companies. Anyway, wallahu ta'ala. Okay guys, inshallah, if anybody else has questions, you can stay and everybody else can go out. The food is waiting for you guys. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.